you have told the separation science community that there's this underlying mechanism of fluid dynamics that's occurring in chromatography that no one had identified until now. So what kind of reaction have you gotten? Has it been excitement or skepticism or some of both? I, yeah, it's, it's largely been excitement. I think initially when you hear a new idea that, you know, you think you know chromatographic theory, you've known it all your life, and then yeah. all of a sudden somebody comes and tells you, no, it doesn't work that way. Exactly, it doesn't yeah. go to, the velocity doesn't go to zero at the walls. Uh, but the, it's, it, this is interesting. The theory for this was first published in 1823 by Navier, who was, who was you know, the, probably the most well-known person in, in fluid dynamics. And uh, um, so in 1823, Thomas Jefferson was still alive. Beethoven was still alive. <laughs> so this is really, really old theory. And, the, and I was telling you earlier that the equation uh, that we use to fit our particle size data fit to Navier's equation from 1823. Wow. And so it fits the theory really, really well. And when people see that they, and, and realize this is, there was a choice, you know, the, does the velocity go to zero at the wall or does it not go to zero at the wall? So Navier published both of those. In chromatography, you never see the effect of non-zero velocity at the wall. So everybody uses the one version of the equation with the zero velocity at the wall because it fits. And so the textbooks always ignored the slip case, and, but, it, but it's there. And so we see it now. So what's the future direction of your research into slip flow? So uh, really two things. So one is, is um, looking, at, as I said, at the monoclonal antibodies and various other protein drugs and, and pushing this as far as we can uh, to get better and better resolution. So a, as we discussed earlier, more methods development to take advantage of, of uh, the ability to work more at, the, at, at slow gradients at the isocratic limit. Um, and then uh, applications in, um, in medicine. So um, top-down proteomics kinds of applications we're exploring with various groups around the country to, um, to utilize the fact that there aren't very good columns right now. There haven't been good enough columns to serve the, pro the top-down proteomics uh, group of people. And so we're collaborating with various people in that area, looking at uh, things like biomarker discovery, um, unraveling um, epigenetics and cancer, for example. So there's just tons of applications to look at that are going to be really exciting. Well, Mary, thank you so much for talking to us today.